Well, God bless you and welcome to uh, Living Word Ministries International, where we are trying our best to reach one soul at a time with this gospel. We had, had a previous interview with Dr. Ada Bullock, who was one of uh, the women that was the keynote speakers for our Women's Ministry 2009 conference, where we are bringing his presence to earth. Now I have the honor of interviewing the second uh, Dr. Nina Gardner, who is my friend and uh, who has helped me become who I am today. To God be the glory. Amen. God bless yes, you. God bless, bless you. you. Uh, Dr. Nino, you, you know, this is so much closer to me than others can imagine because it was you and your husband that was part of my ordaining of Bishop. And uh, uh, I remember talking with your husband uh, a few weeks ago and saying, Brother, could you imagine what God would have been doing today, seven years ago, when he had y'all do what y'all did, and uh, we had a, we had a time in the Lord at that point there. But uh, uh, Dr. Knighty, you 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 have come so far. You've come from being a, a station manager at TBN to now the uh, uh, dean of students for ICM International College of Ministry down there in uh, Olive Branch, Mississippi. Uh, but more so than that, you're still ministering to God's people. Uh, today, you, you were the keynote speaker uh, for the last day of the Women's Conference. And I saw you flow in a way that was so different from before. I've seen you flow before, but today, I've seen you flow differently. And we just, we just recently uh, came out of a conference, a leadership conference, where we had uh, uh, Ambassador Sharon, Dr. Sharon Edmond from uh, Prophetic Promise Prophetic, prophetic awareness uh, down in North Carolina, Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. And one of the things that she was talking to the people about was learning how to soar. And I witnessed it today uh, when you were ministering, how you began to soar in the spirit to be able to properly minister to the women of God. What is it that you received? I mean, you were a giver, but what was it that you were receiving today? That's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> um, just God Himself. Mm. Just experiencing being up on the wings of the wind. Mm. Mm. I, I, I saw you when you, uh, you, you started out with more love, more power. And uh, God had told me to get on the drum. And uh, I noticed that he had me do a lot of accenting on the cymbals and on the floor tom-tom. Now, being a drummer, I understand that music says something into the soul of man. Yeah. And uh, uh, to see you go, 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 and then preach at the same time. As you were ministering to people, uh, I saw Dr. Ada doing it on Friday night and then saw you do it on Sunday morning. I said, God, this is a new thing. Because you have to be so in tune with God to flow back and forth like that. And uh, uh, is this one of the areas that y'all are teaching in the ICM as well? You know, you teach by way of demonstration. Okay. More so than what you teach. Okay. okay. Any, anybody who, who has really studied, um, what do I want to say? Um, when you get up behind a pulpit, only about 15% of what you said verbally goes to the people. Okay. 85% okay. is in your tone, mm. is in your body posture. Mm. And is, is in being able to flow with the Holy Spirit. Okay, I can understand that. And so it's it's not so much as what you say as to whether the people can feel mm. what is happening. Mm. Mm. And you can't make people feel anything. That's right, that's right. It, it's the work of the Holy Spirit that comes to convict the hearts of men. I've been mm. teaching the class um, this last little, uh, just last couple of weeks or so uh, on the doctrine of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. him being the breath of God. Okay. Okay. But interesting, when when the Holy Spirit shows up, He comes in to convict. He always points the way back to the blood of Christ. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Preach on the blood. The Holy Ghost has to come up mm -hmm. to testify it. Okay. He has okay. to validate it. But when the Holy Spirit comes, He always comes back to point it back to Christ. Mm -hmm. And as I was teaching, what the Lord showed me was, 
is that God the Father defined mm -hmm. sin. Okay. When he prepared the law. Okay. But when Jesus came, he came to forgive the sin. All right. Come on, sis. Mm -hmm. Then when the Holy Ghost came, he came to convict men mm -hmm. of their sin. Mm -hmm. So um, until people can feel what you're expressing behind the pulpit, they're never going to respond. Wow. That, 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 is, that is so, so I, I don't want to use a cliche, deep. But that is so on target, especially the word when you use convict, not condemn. Right. The, oh, Lord. I remember when I was coming up in church, there was so much condemnation being preached. And I, I couldn't understand that. All this condemnation that people felt so bad about themselves. It's one thing to feel bad about sin. It's another thing to feel bad about you. And when people begin to feel so bad about them, they don't even want to come to church. But I, I think we've lost it in some points. Oh, don't get me wrong. We are supposed to preach the truth. We are supposed to preach it as God gives it. But God releases his word in a, such a compassionate way that the Holy Spirit covers it with an anointing of love that no matter where you are in sin, that anointing will grab you, not condemn you, but convict you to repentance. And I think that's what it's all supposed to be about. Uh, in your school, uh, uh, in your ministry, uh, One Voice International, I understand that you and uh, Apostle Gardner now are now doing a uh, ministry for the prophets. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, the prophetic roundtable was something that the Lord spoke to my heart about last fall. Mm -hmm. And he said that prophets are more of a different animal, if you will. Uh, not that they're animals, I but, but, but they're of a different breed. Somebody's going to write and they say, you called us animals, so yeah, I'm yeah. glad you corrected that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, you know, as a prophet myself, I understand that there are things that we see, we hear, we experience that is not the norm. Mm. And, uh, and, and if they don't understand it, then they become confused. They don't know who they are. They don't know why that they're seeing what they're seeing. They, un they don't know why they're hearing what they're hearing. And then when they speak of it, everybody thinks that they're crazy. Okay. okay. And so that was part of the reason, and because most of the prophets feel like they're part of church, but yet they don't feel like they're okay. part of church. Okay. Because, because they're, they're just on a different plane. Mm, mm. And so the prophetic roundtable then was started you know, kind of a, to be a, like a community of sorts, mm -hmm. not a clique, okay. but, but a way for, for prophets to come in to be ministered to for them to share notes, mm -hmm. saying, this is what I'm seeing. Are you seeing this? Wow, wow, that's good. And so, good. so as we begin to share notes, it's kind of like, because we see in part, mm -hmm. we know in part, we yes, prophesy yes, in part. Yes, yes, And so as we're doing that, mm -hmm. uh, then all of a sudden you say, oh, we see what God is doing. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And so it just kind of confirms, you know, the things that are in your heart, the things that you're seeing. Uh, there's training. Mm -hmm. uh, we also offer counseling mm -hmm. uh, for the prophets. You know, they go through things just like anybody Amen. else do. Amen. But, but you know, the problem is that a lot of times they can't find someone that they can talk and share with wow. that will understand. Wow. Wow. And a lot of the prophets that I counsel will come and tell me, I don't find anybody that will understand where I am. Come on. That's good. That's good. You know, uh, uh, being married to a prophet, you know, I understand exactly what you're saying. Uh, Jesus makes us a, a comment. He says, for I tell you the truth, that a prophet has no honor in their own country. Yeah. And so when, when these prophets are sitting within churches, this is me as a pastor, I think they don't understand the fullness of why they're there. They don't. Uh, a, a prophet uh, in fivefold ministry, our apostles, our, our prophets, our evangelists, our teachers, and our pastors, everyone has a place in the body of Christ. So if there is an apostle there, he is that region Overseer, He is there to view that region. If there is a prophet, that prophet is there to give the foresight and insight of what God has for that region. The evangelist comes in to evangelize that region. The pastors come in to, be, to shepherd the sheep that are brought in from that region. And then the teachers come in to teach them that are in that region. So when you have these prophets sitting in the church and they're seeing the different things that they're saying... Some of them think it's for their own private interpretation. Whereas I, as a pastor, I know that that prophet is assigned to me to come and tell me what they are seeing for the ministry that God has me doing. Why does there seem to be a disconnect there that the prophets don't think that 
they can connect with the pastors and the pastors don't think they can connect with the prophets. Mm 